Good day, YouTube. This is just a bit of a silly yet fun comparison video between Linux Mint 21, the latest release on the left-hand side here, versus Windows 11, uh, <laughs> technically also the latest release for Windows on the right-hand side here. So this is truly, or almost truly really these days, a bit of a uh, apples to oranges video for sure. Now let's see, let's have a look at what they do the same. So they both do word processing, they both have video and uh, image editing apps. Most of them are all open source uh, and free on Linux Mint. Whereas they are, I mean, you can get the same apps, but you can also get the proprietary apps on the Windows side there. So it is a bit different like that. Also, Windows is obviously a gaming machine, gaming computer. So if you're a gamer and, uh, that's not on console, but you are in fact on uh, Windows, uh, well, sorry, uh, gaming on PC, then you do need a Windows 11. Uh, machine. I had a, a, a work engineer recently say to me at work. He said, uh, "You know, li you know, Linux is, is uh, can play almost as many games as Windows now." <laughs> I wish I could say that's true. I am biased towards Linux, but that, that's just so far from reality that I don't know where a, a, a programming and really a software engineer gets his information from. Anyway, uh, let's see. Now they they both open browsers. In fact, you can get the Microsoft Edge browser on Linux Mint these days. True story. You can also get, in fact, everything down here. You can get Microsoft Teams on uh, Linux Mint there as well. You can get a rip-off version of Cortana. Not that anyone uses Cortana. You can get uh, Firefox, Chrome, uh, you name it. All the, the standard sort of browsing apps, uh, you can get it on Linux Mint there as well. In fact, there is Firefox right there. Let's go to the internet apps and, uh, in fact, where are we? Internet, okay. So there's a, a torrenting app, an email client, uh, chat app, uh, browser. You can install a lot more things, but uh, in fact, I'll just let you know, there is a software uh, manager where you can actually choose software that you might want to download on Linux Mint there. Of course, they've got the same thing on Windows uh, 11. I've Never really used it. I'm not big on uh, Windows, obviously, uh, with a channel like this. But uh, there is a, a, a like a, a, a downloading of software app and games, that sort of thing. But uh, just because most people won't know Linux that well, we'll have a look at this one. I'll just sort of stretch it down if I can. No, I can't. Yeah, I've got the limitations based on what I'm doing with this type of versus video. But you've got your editor picks, you've got your categories. Now there are some games, but these are very uh, low-key, low-end games. Super Tux Kart. Nexi this actually looks quite good, this uh, Nexius uh, 3D person shooter one. Whole bunch of things there. But, uh, you know, board games, it's all categorized. It's not just games, but cat subcategories within the games. Uh, no maps, Dropbox, so you'll see Steam. Now this is where the guy, the, the, the software engineer guy probably thought you can play most games because there is Steam. Now only like 10% of the Steam catalog can actually play uh, when it's installed on Linux, can play the full Steam catalog otherwise on Windows. So that is uh, to be, you know, you've just got to be aware of that. But you, more and more, you will find there are proprietary apps that you can get on, win normally get on Windows that you can get now on Linux. Spotify, Dropbox, I mean, they're, they're showing all the good stuff here. Blender, Steam, Virtual Box, Shutter. Uh, well, actually, that's not one. Uh, WhatsApp, and uh, the list does go on, but I can't think of any others right now. Whole bunch of good off Office apps there as well that are compatible 99% uh, of the time with uh, the uh, Windows Office apps there as well. But uh, that's a bit of a look and feel. What we'll do is we'll go into the, uh, the file manager, for instance. So this is pretty similar in a way. Uh, Windows 11 is actually doing it quite nice and beautifully these days with their, uh, their upgraded iconography, for lack of a better term, and colors there. Uh, Linux Mint is uh, pretty similar. I mean, what you do is you drag and drop, that kind of thing. Uh, same, of course, with Windows. You can right-click, create new folders, that sort of thing, just as you should be able to do with Windows. That's embarrassing. Um, <laughs> I won't get into that there, but hey, my favorite thing about Linux is uh, Terminal. It's still useful. I use it for not hardcore scripting, just basic updating, just quick installing of apps, that sort of thing. It is faster than the GUI, uh, the graphical user interface, that is to say, many uh, days of the week. That is for darn certain. Uh, let's see what else. Now, normally I compare the kernels, but these kernels are completely different. Uh, let's see. Uh, one thing I will compare, though, is the RAM usage and CPU usage on boot up. So Windows CPU is just kind of 100% at the moment. This is this is the problem with Windows, which I had for years, which is probably the reason why I moved to Linux, if I remember correctly. It was always just 
not idling out. You, it was using way too much RAM, CPU was just going nuts. And it is right now, and I'm not a fan of that. Whereas we're running at about 2%, 5%, uh, mostly idling off for Linux or Linux Mint 21. I guess I'm just putting Linux Mint 21 under the boat of Linux versus Windows, the way that I'm doing this video. You probably somewhat figured that out by now. But uh, let's have a look at the RAM on boot up. So 720 megabytes of RAM on boot up, pretty good, yeah. Uh, Windows 11, 1 1.6 megabytes of RAM on boot, gigabytes of RAM on boot up. So about double, 2.5 times the amount of RAM, but that is to be expected, it is Windows. I've only allocated three gigabytes of RAM uh, for this one, so it's probably gonna normally about be about 1.7, maybe two gigabytes of RAM there. It's probably a swap file here, if you guys know much about swap files, non-page and pool. Uh, okay, she's not actually sure how it wants to choose that one, but nothing in the swap file here for Linux Mint 21 because it doesn't need anywhere near the 4 gigabyte of RAM that I had allocated for it. It does say slightly less than 3 gigabytes and 4 gigabytes, but that's how the RAM allocation happens on boot up. Um, but uh, yeah, so you are definitely looking at a much more lightweight machine. If you're just doing simple emails and web browsing and uh, whew, yeah. I guess that sort of thing there, uh, watching videos on YouTube, that kind of thing then, and want a super lightweight yet super secure, uh, virus not friendly operating system, maybe for yourself as a second PC or your mum or your dad, then Linux is actually 100% the way to go. Maybe not Linux Mint 21, I'd probably recommend Zorin OS for starters. It's pretty neat and it's, it's designed for newcomers to Linux from Windows, so it looks pretty good. Uh, but it is much of a muchness on the back end, really. So super secure, super lightweight, super fast, great for older hardware. Uh, if you're doing internet banking or uh, all sorts of transactions, credit card transactions online, I just, a few years back, quite a few years ago now, I just could not continue to support Windows in that way. I just didn't trust it. Uh, I mean, there is the the attack vector for Windows in terms of viruses, trojans. It is the the the, the attack vector. I mean, in the Mac and Linux, they just it's not the the big operating system. So hackers don't waste their time on on uh, operating systems that barely are you know five or ten percent of the market share, market penetration there. And that's what's so good about it, really. Yeah. So I'm going to leave it at that for now, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, please leave a comment, subscribe, hit that like button, and I do hope to see all of you guys there in the next one. Cheers.